Sydney, Australia. The stunning backdrop to the 2022 FIBA World Cup. It's day number two. You're looking at Puerto Rico getting set to take on Team USA here in Group A play. Both teams walk in with a victory on day one and carry a lot of momentum into this matchup. I'm Despina Barton, joined by Lori Chiswick, the former Australian assistant coach here inside the Sydney Olympic Park Sports Center. We are doing introductions, and Lori, at this time, I'd like to kind of pick your brain a little bit about what we should possibly expect for today's matchup. Well, as you said, Despina, both teams are coming off wins, but what a historic win for Puerto Rico. Their first win in just their second Women's World Cup. And I love this, co this quote from Coach Bastista. We want to face good teams, and our attitude is, if you are not prepared for us, you can see what happens. And I tell you what, today they are facing a very good team in the USA who I have no doubt will be well and truly prepared. And for you guys joining us right now, you're looking at nine dressed players for Team USA at this point. I will let you know they've got two more that have arrived off that WNBA championship Las Vegas squad. We will see Kelsey Plum join the team shortly as well as Chelsea Gray. But Puerto Rico, they've got a lot on their mind and they are playing for their country, Lori. Their country recently got hit by a hurricane. So any moments of joy they can bring back to their homeland, that is what they're aiming for. And what a great thing to be thinking about in the back of your mind to be playing for your country. Anytime you step on the court, it's a proud moment. But, but with that in their minds, they are gonna come out today not be intimidated by the might of the USA, really pumped up from yesterday's win and full of confidence. And I don't know if you get an advantage or not, Lori, but this is the court that Puerto Rico played on yesterday morning. Team USA in the other arena just a mile away. So I'm not sure how those logistics come into play. Certainly for athletes, I know everyone is routine based. Well, I don't know that it makes a huge difference other than if the rings are a little bit different. So if one's a little bit uh, bouncier, though the rebounds are longer, um, you get a feel. But to be honest, these are elite athletes. They are pro athletes and they play all around the world and have to get used to anything and everything. And they've done just that at 14 hour time difference for the Americans coming from the United States. And this is a look now at the slate for today of games. So much basketball over the next eight days. And we'll kick things off here. First thing in the morning with USA and Puerto Rico. This, a current look at Group A standings. China, Puerto Rico, USA, Belgium, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, Korea round out the bunch. Obviously the top three victorious on day one. And I think it's worth noting these two teams met just back in February. We will get set here to honor the flags and the national anthem, first with the visiting team, USA. And now for the national anthem of Puerto Rico.
What a prideful moment there. Lori, now these two teams will meet together and do a gift exchange, something that had gone away for the last two and a half years with COVID, even the handshakes, being in the gym without masks. It's a new era for basketball. And it's always so nice to see the teams at the start of a game, meet at the center line, exchange the gifts, and get ready to play. So right now it's, it's, it's friendly, and then as soon as that ball tosses up, they're ready to go. And you're looking at the officiating crew that has the tall task of calling this game today. They too are the top of their class to be here with us in Sydney, Australia. We're gonna take a first look here at the visiting team that is Team USA and a look at their starting crew. We wanna point out number 10, Brianna Stewart. She is the starter and she just went, excuse me, she's the captain who went off yesterday. Wow, didn't she have a game? And she just led by example, 22 points at 44%, four rebounds, three assists, and she was just everywhere. And, and that's what they need from her. When this team is still coming together, they need her as a leader. They need her out there scoring and doing things at both ends of the court. And you're looking at the head coach, Cheryl Reeve, there for Team USA. No sleep on this trip for Coach Reeve. On the other side of the court is Puerto Rico. They are the home team today. And number 22 there, Ariela Garantes is the star of the show, putting together the best performance in Puerto Rico World Cup history yesterday. Well, we talked about Stewart getting 22 points. Well, Garantes got 26 points at 55%. Thank you very much. Nine rebounds and eight assists, close to that, that triple. So she is one to watch on this Puerto Rico team. And you're looking at Coach Batista. He likes to go by Jerry Batista. He's been at the helm here now in his eighth season, took over the program in 2014, and they have been making a steadily, steady climb on the international stage. But they've got the tough draw of being in the same group as USA, the number one team in the world, coming off, obviously, their Olympic gold medal run. Plus, plus, plus. This team, in fact, has not lost in World Cup play the last 23 games. That's a bit of added pressure, Despina, when you come into these tournaments as red-hot favorites. And the fact that they haven't lost, you don't want to be that first team to not get a gold medal. So they'll be prepared for this game. They want to try and limit their turnovers from yesterday. They had 19, which is a little bit uncharacteristic for the UA but doesn't surprise me given they haven't had a lot of time together. And I think that'll improve as things go on, but they will also want to build on that very impressive defense that they played against Belgium. And Puerto Rico, they're obviously getting their first World Cup victory against Bosnia and Herzegovina. And it was in a pretty convincing fashion yesterday. Well, they'll take a lot of confidence from that game going in to get against the USA. They'll want to run and rebound, rebound and run. They don't want to get caught in a quarter court grind out there. But the big thing is, anytime you play the USA, you don't want to come out intimidated. You want to come out, be aggressive, be physical, take it at them. And that will get started right here with the jump ball. Now, if you're looking at these two rosters, USA has a height advantage. Their average standing six foot one, 185 centimeters. Meanwhile, Puerto Rico is five foot 10 and a little bit younger too. And we haven't even touched on this yet, Lori. They are without one of their star shooting forwards, Jasmine Guathme, who's been battling a knee injury. And what Guathme brings to this team, she's an inside presence, she's a driver, she's athletic. So yes, they will miss her, but it does give an opportunity for other players to step up. Holling Shed gets the jump in Puerto Rico. We'll start things out on offense. You're looking at their captain here, Pamela Rosado. Holling should looking. Garantes is looking at Lloyd. Behind the back, slips the ball right out of her hands. USA in transition. Topper. Coast to coast, won't finish. She's got Brianna Stewart for that. What a great follow-up by Brianna Stewart there to just scrap up any misses her teammates make.
Rosado, the oldest on this roster for Puerto Rico, 36 years young. Garantes on the other end, the floater baseline, no good, drawing the contact. First foul for Jewel Lloyd. You can see that Quinones is trying to continue where she left off yesterday and really put some pressure on the rim, attack those defenders. Garantes, 24 years old, joined the team from Hungary. So while Puerto Rico did an extensive camp, and trained on their way here. She was a late addition in Sydney. She said she got a lot of work in on those scrimmage games and was important to her not to uh, disrupt the chemistry, but jump in and be effective. Different start yesterday with USA and Belgium. They jumped out to a 12-0 run, didn't let Belgium score until the first three minutes. Lloyd on the curl, she'll take it back. Little high-low action to Thomas, spits it out. Lloyd's waiting. No go. Garantes with the rock. Tripped up at midcourt, trying to cover. Great way to hang on to it, Garantes. Rosado to Melendez. Little pump fake. We're moving baseline again, this one off. Garantes. And this is a different look defense. Now Puerto Rico picking up three-quarter court. Just putting that little bit of pressure on the USA so they can't come down and just easily start their offense. That feed into Thomas. This time successful the first go around. Lloyd to Atkins. Again, I like the look of the USA and how switched on they look defensively. Geronte is being guarded tightly by Copper. This is where Kalia Copper pays her bills. Wow. It's on defense. Yes, it is. What an amazing defender she is. And, and Garante was really trying to take her one on one, but she stayed connected, kept her body in front and was able to force that turnover. Getting a little handsy. Some defense from Hollingshed. They're back in zone. Stewart pop, jump, shot, no good. She'll head to the free throw line for two. It's difficult when you're a team like Puerto Rico to match up and, and match the athleticism and the speed and the versatility of the USA team. And so you can see them go into a zone early to just try and, you know, play defense by committee more so. And after last night's game, Brianna Stewart talked about the expectation of seeing multiple defenses. They know Puerto Rico pretty well. They just played this team in February in DC. And obviously being neighboring nations, so to speak, much more familiar with one another. Nowhere to go. Hollingshed gives the feed down with streaking. Perfect play right on cue. Tyra Melendez. Great slash to the basket. Great vision to get her the ball. Wow, and, and Melendez with the quick hands on defense. Good ball and player movement right now by Puerto Rico. Clock sticking down, those shots gotta go up. Stolen away, Alyssa Thomas feeds Copper. He wants to give it back, Thomas for the cleanup, go! Puerto Rico wins out the possession. Hollingshed waiting in the cherry picking position. It's easy too for Puerto Rico. That wasn't an easy pass to make, but Rosado just nailed that pass. Atkins hits Lloyd on the cut. Easy jumper off the elbow. Nice little curl cut by Jewel Lloyd. Caught the ball in rhythm, ready to shoot it. 
Rosado being covered by Atkins. Shot from the baseline, Rosado's first, and Giantes with the rebound will play it up again. Stewart all over that. Stewart saying, hey, I know we're the visiting team today, but get out of, get out of here. Nine, nine seconds on that shot clock. You can see the timing of that block by Brianna Stewart. Here's a double. Thomas successful. Copper feeds her. Laying on the left. USA push out, pushes out in front by four. Rosado to Hollingshed. Tipped out by Copper. Another chance though, but five. Seven seconds there on the shot clock. Again, we see that smothering defense by the USA. Just very active hands, getting deflections, being disruptive. Melendez looking for help. Garantes, big power play stripped away. Back-to-back -back steals for USA. Thomas to Stewart. Skip pass. Atkins gets it back, top of the key. Backdoor cutter, Kalia Copper, the finish. Such great finish, such great court vision by Ariel Atkins. Just snuck in the back of the zone to get an easy basket. Saw her teammate, great pass. And that, of course, is going to force Puerto Rico to take a timeout. They trailed by six. That's just a great read by both the players, by both the passer and by Copper coming in there and uh, recognizing her defense had turned her head. So they look good against the zone. Everybody's collapsing, right? So you need to move. If we don't move, nothing is going to happen on over. We need to move, guys. Make a screen, slip to the basket, make a screen or slip, whatever you want to do, but we need to move. Okay, fix it up. Please position. We're gonna go like in more set. Okay, pass the ball to one of the posts. And go stagger screen to other side. Okay, and then after the stagger screen, the one, both of you, the one that is in top, is gonna make a screen. Open up, that's Jennifer. Okay, now you have to So Coach Batista there drawing out a set play. And I want to say this is going to be for Jennifer O'Neill. Yes, she's checking in the veteran Jennifer O'Neill, the point guard, 32-year-old who's been playing professionally in Brazil. Jennifer O'Neill has very high basketball IQ, and, you know, she can facilitate her teammates and has really, you know, had a good game yesterday as well. USA comes out of the timeout, ready to go with her full court press. O'Neill's been playing with these women for so many years. Right back to Rosado. Looking for that screen on back door. Hauling shed. One second, won't get the shot up. Does she? know? Stewart feeds it, intended for Kalia Copper. They're gonna say this was last touch by Puerto Rico. So USA keeps the ball. And it looks like the officiating crew will take a moment here, just to make sure the call is correct. I think Puerto Rico feel like she didn't get a hand in there, that it just went straight out of bounds and it should be their ball. Okay, well, after the meeting, the play in the call stands. Laney hits Lloyd. Free throw, shot, a miss. Stewart leaping out of nowhere. 
keeps the ball with USA. That's one thing Puerto Rico have to try and do is block out, not give the USA, or limit at least, the USA's second chance opportunities. They're just too good. If you're going to give them second, third chances, they're going to score on you. Yeah, two major keys for this Puerto Rico team when they laced up against USA was obviously to get back on transition defense, and they got to stick with them rebounding-wise. O'Neal. Man, Copper on the defensive end just hustling the, the feed down to Thomas. Copper's the MVP of the first six minutes. She is, absolutely. O'Neal playing real close to that midway point. Not enough on Rosado's pass. Tracked down by Thomas. Stewart waits. A miss. Laney trying to keep it up. Hollingshed secures the ball. That's what Puerto Rico are talking about, that, that fast break, that transition from the U.S. They're looking to get out and run every single time. Wow. O'Neal tried to get the feed into Melendez. Stewart intercepted. And here's just, it looks like practice right now for Team USA. Because the USA are so powerful in their fast break transition offense, it's really important that Puerto Rico take care of the ball. They have to limit their turnovers because every turnover right now is resulting in a, an option for the USA, a fast break score, getting themselves to the foul line. And Puerto Rico aren't even getting a shot at the basket. So they need to absorb this physicality and try and keep the ball and player movement going. Not easy feat against the USA. Jewel Lloyd, a part of that FIBA team for USA that won gold in 2018. Her, Stewart, a few others knows what it takes. Quinones, top of the key, big three, off to the left. UNESCO on the floor now for USA, the only player to not score for Team USA yesterday. <laughs> Meanwhile, having a field day, Alyssa Thomas, she had in 27 minutes, 14 points, nine assists, seven boards, nearly, nearly a triple-double in her opener against Belgium. Hollingshed. Hitting it from range. That's nice to see Hollingshed getting involved in this. They need her. They need her scoring. They need her rebounding. Lloyd left alone, top of the key. That one's in. USA out in front by 15. 225 to play in the first quarter. O'Neal being guarded by UNESCO. Look at that trap. USA showing us a lot of different defensive schemes today. And it is, it's an opportunity for them for, to be fine tuning these sorts of things. O'Neal creating her own. Might have had some contact from Laney. And some substitutions. Quinones and Rosado will sit. Durantes and Pagan, come on. This will give the opportunity for the USA to, to really play everybody in their rotations, see what's working, try some different things out. Because as we've mentioned, there's three more players to come into this lineup, so they need to be as familiar with each other as they can. Thomas going down the lane, just fearless. Get out of my way. Everything's very easy for the U.S. right now. Thomas with eight points. Hollingshed, we'll try it again. Let's see if I can get it. Pagan, Pagan in the mix. And a foul against USA. Brianna Jones. Hollingshed is actually a native from Houston, Texas, and was naturalized in just July of this year. So it's a player that they wanted to bring on the court, bring into the program to continue to build it. And uh, certainly, 
they're looking to, to you know, rely on her for a number of years now. Gerantes driving right. Won't pull up. Pagan, something to do. She'll double dribble. Double dribble violation. Turnover number nine for Puerto Rico. Inside out, everything is a good look for USA right now. Well, it is against the zone. They're moving the ball from side to side, inside out. In and out for Garantes. We'll keep it moving with Jones. Another chance, Pagan. O'Neal hasn't met a three. She hasn't liked right there on cue. That is a great shot by O'Neal. And then forcing a turnover. She had to shoot that over a big hand. Get that replay and, up, guys. Get and, that replay. And at the end of a shot clock, shot clock pressure. See here, Ionescu was just right there. Gotta love it, Jennifer O'Neill with her first three of the game. Well, Puerto Rico shot seven threes, made seven threes in yesterday's game. The most they'd made in all the three of their combined games before. Holling shed, attempt no good, loose ball. USA picks it up, final 20 seconds of the first. UNESCO slows it down. Calling her play, she's saying five out. Shot on the wing, no, we're gonna feed Jones on the block because that's the easy shot. Well, Laney actually had the shot, but she chose a good, to pass it inside so that a good shot became a great shot to her teammate. And after the first 10 minutes, USA is in great position. They are up 27 to 11. And Lori, when I talk to the, the staff over at USA, as we take a quick glimpse at the stats here, that was one of their keys for today. They want to keep sharing the ball for that easy bucket. Well, and they certainly are doing that in this first quarter. Everybody's getting involved. They're working it around, and they're finding each other. They're finding each other in a great spot through whatever they're running. I mean, they've had a lot of fast break baskets, but you can see that they're playing together. That nice little pick and roll action there. Beautiful finish. And that smothering defense by Thomas. Good push here, and there we see Hollingshed waiting for that basket, waiting for that outlet pass. Talk about the defense from Kalia Copper. A catalyst, too. I mean, I, I can just tell she's fueling off of each look, and then they, she gets the feed on the baseline. So the USA right now are just, they, they look like they're brimming with confidence there. What they're doing out there is very team-oriented. They're looking for each other. They're playing for each other. They look really sharp. Up by 16 after the first 10. And they've got one, two, three, four, five different scores on the board. Meanwhile, Puerto Rico, just four. And they're gonna keep O'Neal on the floor. You're looking, by the way, at the courtside 1891 app. Really nifty. Get it on your phone today. All the background, all the all the highlights, games, stats, everything you could want from FIBA World Cup on that app. UNESCO three, a miss. Again, she has not scored yet in this FIBA tournament. Puerto Rico fans on their feet. They're not liking this call. Atkins, too much on that throw. That was intended for Priyana Jones. 
USA run a little flex action on their out of bounds play which is a baseline cutter and the pass inside just didn't get executed quite properly. O'Neal surveying here. San Antonio, it's like the intended player she's trying to get the ball to. I'll try another fade away. Not this time, but Austin's going to get dinged for an over the back on Quinones. I love the fact that O'Neal is feeling confident to shoot over these taller, stronger USA players. She's got a hand in her face, and that was a good shot to take for her. Listen, one of my favorite players, I know you're not, have, you're not supposed to have favorites, is Jennifer <laughs> O'Neill, because she is just fearless out there. Standing five foot five, she comes from a pedigree of deep basketball uh, history with Kentucky, lots of Euro ball now in Brazil. Uh, she's, there's no intimidation factor here. Ooh, ball slips through Garante's hands. We're running with Atkins. Laney, the trailer, she splits. Great space, and Atkins will take it herself. Did you see Lloyd's eyes as she was dribbling that ball up the floor? While she was going on her own, she was looking for her teammates, scoping out if something else was available. Spacing an issue here for Puerto Rico. He cough up now their 10th turnover. Laney <laughs> waits for Inescu, a miss on the left. Garantes tackles the ball for that rebound. It was a great slice through the key by Unescu, but just wasn't able to finish. And she wanted that call. She wants a basket. Guarding the much younger San Antonio there. Pagan. San Antonio had a little bit of space from that screen. But Ante is right at Atkins throwing up something before the shot clock. Then we have a reset. Ball is in play. Austin, the finish. I like Austin running rim to rim. Getting an easy look inside, a deep feed. You mentioned that, uh, Despina, that there was a little bit of separation when they came off that on ball. I think they're going to have to pull up and jump shoot that. That's, that's a, a good option for them. San Antonio, just 18 years old. I mean, at 18, I'm not sure if that intuition is there quite yet. Here we go. San Antonio at UNESCO. Garantes from mid-court. It was short, but it looked on target. It did, it was very straight. Orsato checks back in. San Antonio steps off. The veteran captain back on the floor for Puerto Rico. UNESCO taking a breather as well. USA out in front by 20. Atkins left alone, uncontested. What a save by Copper. Austin takes the baseline, no. Foul, cold. Just the athleticism you can see there of Copper. Ball going out of bounds. She can have the time, the hang time, to see who can I pass it to. Where's my teammate? Austin with three points on the game. Make it four. And for Puerto Rico at this point, Lori, what needs to happen? What needs to change before this really gets out of hand? Well, I think you have to make sure, I mean, 
I, I like right now, you know, even though the shot clock has gone off, they're not turning it over so that USA can get any fast breaks. They need to just keep working at that pace, hoping that, you know, they can at least get a shot at the basket. Set some screens for each other and take any open opportunity. Spin move, attempt, no go for Jones. You talked about it, Lori. They were red hot yesterday, scoring, goodness, 53 points in the first half. Can you honest? Well, you look now, and, and USA have scored six points in four minutes, so at least they're slowing down the, the rate of scoring. Because one thing you know for sure, you can't get in a run-and-gun game with the USA. Nobody wins. Nobody wins game. except the USA. <laughs> <laughs> O'Neal steps off for Puerto Rico. It's always going to be a hard ask for, for a team like Puerto Rico up against the might of the USA. There's size, there's strength, there's athleticism, there's experience. They're going up against it all. But again, it doesn't, you know, for them, hopefully each quarter they're learning something. Copper, sleeper on the block. Foul's going to be called. It looks like it's going to be against Melendez. Tyra Melendez. Just caught sleeping. Just didn't see the vision sneaking in behind. Often that passer, person that passes it in, if you're not aware of what you're do they're doing, they can just get step in, as Copper did, and she finds herself at the line. Meanwhile, a critical foul for Melendez. That is her third personal. So already waiting to check in on her behalf is Vargas. Copper missing. Taking baseline, Quinones trying to go over the much taller Stewart. And USA is rolling. Atkins pull up 10 footer, lefty misses. Some entanglement as Thomas goes after that rebound with Hollingshed. Hollingshed had good position, held that position, and an over the back call on the rebound. We're going to give lots of credit here to Team USA's Alyssa Thomas. She joined the team on Wednesday and yesterday nearly pulled off a triple-double. She's back on the floor. Nine assists, too. You know, to come in, having arrived late, not had the training with your, with your teammates, that's impressive, really impressive. Shot clock's going to expire. Rashado's shot is tipped Atkins. <laughs> Making sure she's okay does not... Let her body drop there on Rosado. We have some staff make sure that that area is all wiped away. What body control? It there. is very good. She's do looks like she's doing a push-up. It's very impressive. Meanwhile, Team USA has been here since September 14th. At least the core group has been here since September 14th. Puerto Rico, they have trained a little bit all over in preparation of the time change in this competition. Stewart from the corner. Wow, wow, Stewart. So consistent with what she does every time she steps on the court. That was a very quick release on that three-point shot. Nine points, four rebounds for Stewart today. Just catch and shoot. So nice to watch. Rosado. That is good ball movement. Shot that goes in. That deserved a basket for Puerto Rico. That was a great ball movement and really nice shot from Hollingshed. 
Around the horn we go. Copper, the last one to touch it. Three more for Kalia Copper. Rosado. Hollingshed will try it now on the top of the key. Ooh, she hits yes! And why not? I just made one. Give me the ball. I will try another as a trailer. Thomas to Stewart. Ah, she sold that one. Hollingshed with the hand check. That's Hollingshed's third foul as well, so that's why we see her sitting on the bench, which is so unfortunate because she just had the hot hand. Left alone, Lloyd. Yes! So right now, the USA are just on fire as far as getting the ball inside the paint through either dribble or pass penetration, then just good passing out to wide open shooters, Jewel Lloyd. 50% from the three-point for Team USA. Garante's down the lane with a floater. She'll head to the free throw line. That was nice from Garante. She came off that screen with her left hand, absorbed the contact, and still was able to get a nice shot up. She makes the first one count. Lots of fans here in the stands. We got some school students. We've got Team Puerto Rico fans, USA. Garantes turns, shoots, finds no red jersey in front of her. Thomas. Good hands. Nearly stripped away. Sofia Roma, the 25-year-old. All about it. I wouldn't really call this a momentum shift, but I feel like there's just a little bit more energy with Puerto Rico, a little bit more confidence in what they're doing out there. Gonzalez. Atkins all over her. Garantes with two seconds. She's got to get something up. She does, but it's no good. Copper strolling. Atkins pull up Jay for the lefty. It's good. She showed us the three. Now she's got the long two. Garantes is going to get dinged here for some extra contact on that rebound. And because we are in the, the bonus, Team USA will shoot two free throws the rest of the quarter. So that's something now Puerto Rico have to be careful of because there's still almost three minutes left in this quarter and every time a foul's called, the USA will go to the foul line now. So beautiful. Her finish, her shot. Ariel Atkins drained them both. This Puerto Rico team played about against some of the college teams from the states in preparing for this tournament. And Lori, I think you just spoke into fruition, maybe one of their biggest worries these next two and a half minutes. Oh, well, yes. I think 30 seconds, no, not even 30 seconds went by. And um, there we see Jewel Lloyd at the foul line. 
And of course, for the USA, they're such great foul shooters. Right now, they're shooting it at 92%, 12 from 13. So it's just almost gimme baskets. 12 points for Lloyd today. That was nothing but net. Didn't come close to the rim. Rosado trying to get past her. Garantes, and wow, another foul. This one on the screen from Rosado. The endeavor, if you can see here, of Atkins trying to get over top of this dribble handoff and just a bit of a hip and a shoulder there from uh, Rosado. Jones, block, a miss. Rosado pushing forward. Quinone is trying to keep control. A whistle away from the ball. That was nice action in there. Quinones was trying to seal and hold, and, and it was a good lob pass, and, and she got fouled in the process. So Sofia Roma will get a pair of free throws here. Sorry, I was got those players mixed up. It was Roma that was doing that seal inside. The 25-year-old, she's a Duke alum, a prestigious Basketball school in the States, a college, private university. And we're at that two minute mark of the second quarter. If you're just joining us, you're watching the FIBA Women's World Cup. This is Group A play, Team USA and Team Puerto Rico going at it. I'm Despina Barton. My partner today, of course, is Lori Chizik, the former Australian assistant coach. We're in your home territory, Lori. We are, and it's so great to see, even though this isn't an Australian team play in the Opals, that so many people have come out and are really embracing this this FIBA Women's World Cup and, and the fans that have, they're vocal, they're being treated to some unbelievably great women's basketball. So really excited to be here and to be part of it. Copper goes baseline, draws two, splits them, tries to feed Jones. They'll stall things a little bit. I think the foul must have been called on O'Neal. for that one to go down. <laughs> Copper with seven points in the first half. Ferrantes has Atkins, drives left, pull up, fade away, jumper, nice. yes! More of that for Puerto Rico. Absolutely, Quinones, just a great drive and a bit of a step back on the baseline. Laney on the other end taking some notes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Anything you can do, I can do at the other end. Just can see her driving in hard. Her eyes were up, absorbing that contact. there for Laney. 
Lainey played in Australia for a season, so the fans here know her well, know what she can do. Garantes. Coppers all over her. Body on the floor, Pagans on the paint. Tipped away. Garantes with their own rebound, and Atkins ends that. No look pass, not successful. And Niskew, excuse me, gets the nice. rebound. We'll keep it moving. Jones, the finisher. Just a slash through the key. Brianna Jones. Quinones, three, no. Jones pushing forward. Scanning there, Laney. Three seconds, two, doesn't go. And Puerto Rico, no time left on the clock. At the end of the first two quarters, it is Team USA 54, Puerto Rico 21. USA with a 33 point advantage as they head into the locker room. Just nine players suited up today. Two more have arrived from their WNBA duties. Puerto Rico trying to find the good, but this is painting the story right now, Lori. What sticks out to you? Oh, well, the shooting percentage is the USA is shooting at a really high clip. Turnovers, assists, they're playing team basketball. Um, they're impressive, and, and if you can even, you can see from that stats the, the style that they're playing. 10 steals, they want to run and gun. And if you look there, Jewel Lloyd leads all scorers with 12 points. And this is how these two teams got going. These are the highlights from the first half. Give and go to Melendez. Well, that was just the smothering defense of, um, of uh, Thomas that we saw in that, in that vision there. Copper, Kalia Copper, active hands all throughout. Again, uh, it's just the teamwork. We can see it in any of these plays that are, are coming from the USA. It's the teamwork, it's the team defense, the way they're always looking for each other, finding that next great play, that next great, great pass. And then their confidence at the three-point line. And uh, this shot here from O'Neal, hand in her face, nails it. That certainly brought the house down for Puerto Rico. More of that, this Puerto Rico team had, what, seven threes yesterday in day one. Today, only three. Just, both both feet are just so set and all that's something I've been so impressed with at the USA and, and it's the quality of athletes that they have but they're reading things so well they're taking care of the basketball but here we see one of two shots that were made by by Hollingshed top of the key Nice little step back by Garantes. More of that will be needed to keep this one close. It's halftime here. We're going to step away. Team USA up 54, Puerto Rico 21. Who will you become when the moment arrives? You're carrying the expectations of an entire nation, representing your people and their dreams, the colorful faces in the streets, the screaming fans in the stands. It's time to make your move. All eyes on you, all hope, all heart. Because when you win, you win for all.
kind of thought about, you know, do they rest, repair? Oh, here's Jackson from three! Mara Jackson's on the board for Australia! Speed uh -oh. to Akaho. They waited a very long time for that. Patience paying off. The legs will probably be heavy, but she's still in the game. You mean Connecticut and Sydney aren't close to each other? And what a block by G Girantes. And now again, Puerto Rico, they're pushing the tempo. They want to get out and run. Nice patience by Hollingshed. And now Puerto Rico have jumped out to a six-point lead early in this first quarter. Yeah, and then you see that big block. Talbot, it's a Tolo. The mismatch is on. And she can't quite capitalize yet. Gets the offensive ball, blocked by repair. Gets a third chance, and the end one! Mariana Tolo setting the Sydney Superdome on fire! What a fight by Mariana Tolo. Well, five seconds. Anderson asked to create. Nice defense, but she finds Kreisnik, and Kreisnik does not miss when she is that close to the basket. Beautiful play. What a great pass and play. Yeah, lovely. She's got Stewart all over her so far in these first seven minutes. And a hand in her face. Get it out of here. Nice little back cup, but Brianna Stewart was having none of that. Technically, we're all roommates over the next two weeks here for the FIBA World Cup. Oh, and love. those two first points here, Kone. just showing off for the crowd and you hear them cheering on her exceptional play. China 105, Korea 44. Williams. Talbot the most important hand in her face but it doesn't matter, Gabby Williams. Goodness me, welcome to the Gabby Williams show. Please, Talbot did everything right and Williams still drained that three pointer, 23 points. That's that shot clock pressure right down. That's the U.S. playing that defense. But here, we see a chance for Belgium now. Laying on the left, it's good. Now that'll hit the highlight reel. A little behind the back, no look pass from Van Lu. Yeah, what a beauty. I was looking down at that transition. <laughs> Welcome back inside the Sydney Olympic Park Sports Centre. I'm Despina Barton, joined by Lori Chizik, the former Australian assistant coach. And if you're just joining us, we're going to play a little catch-up. We're going to show you the best plays from the first half with the top scores. First up, shout out Drew Lloyd. Team USA, 12 points and more coming. Jewel Lloyd is the most experienced player on this team in that she's been to many, many of these international competitions and she is showing her class out there. 12 points in the first half, but it's how she's doing it, which was so nice to watch. And Puerto Rico could use some more of this from Hollingshed, 10 points. She's shooting good from the field, just need more of it. Yeah, she needs to get those shots opportunities and we can see her making two threes in a row and then unfortunately she got in foul trouble and had to sit just when she was red hot. Second three coming from the top of the arc. Here at the break, Lori, I mean, what what is happening as far as those conversations in the locker room? Everyone here waiting in anticipation for the teams to jump back out, but they're strategizing going on. Talk me through what this time means for these two teams. 
Well, they'll be having very, very different conversations in each of the locker rooms um, this morning. So for the USA, well, well, they'd be happy with what they're doing. They're shooting the ball at a great percentage, 50% from the three-point line, 89% from the, from the free-throw line. And what they talked about is limiting their turnovers. And so they'll want to keep that, that style of game going that they're playing. They've, they've only had the six turnovers, 15 assists. It's all about team for the USA and keeping that defense going. On the flip side for Puerto Rico, well, they need to talk about how they're going to get the ball through hands. It's really hard to play one-on-one -on -one against the likes of the mighty USA team. So Copper plays great defense. Jones was out there playing defense. Stewart, we know what she can do. So it's about playing team. How can we get ourselves open by working together? So is that setting screens? Is that coming off screens away from the ball? Uh, it, it, they need to do it by committee. They need to score by committee and they need to play defense by committee. Not an easy task, but that's the sort of conversations we are having. Take care of the ball, try to get some shots. And Have USA. I summed that up okay? I mean, <laughs> wow. that's why you're the expert, Lori. Wow, I just think of the Puerto Rico coach out there. But you know, you'd have to stay positive too. There's no point in getting down on your players. Again, I talk about this being a great experience for them. It's a great experience to play against the USA. So if you can improve or do something better, something little better each quarter, then that's what you want to make sure that you do. You see Team USA making their way back onto the court. Already we know the conversation was a little bit tighter in that locker room during the break. They're looking to keep their streak alive here in FIBA World Cup play. 23 straight victories in World Cup play and 30 in the preliminary round, which we are in right now in Group A. Puerto Rico back on the floor. And another look at those game leaders on the bottom of your screen. Lori, for a tournament like this, that is over 10 days, nine days of full competition for these teams that are expected to go to the end, how to approach the longevity of a tournament like this? Health-wise, you know, coaching-wise. Yes, well, it's it's it's, it's an interesting. It's it's very different than than coaching in a, a season-long, um, you know, environment. So you have to um, you have to get make sure your players are aren't fatigued that they stay motivated. I mean, you're at a World Cup. You have to be motivated, but it's about managing minutes when you can. Uh, it's about the combinations of, that you've got on the court and what works and do what doesn't work. And it's about improving as you go along so that by the end of the tournament, when it comes to medal rounds, that you're just really tweaking things. You, you, you learn so much. But you know what? There's a little bit of luck that plays in it as well as far as injuries go. And, you know, you just can't predict that. But, uh, wow, one of the highlights, one of the players that's an absolute highlight is Copper. And she has done so much at both ends of the court. You know, she can score, she's a great facilitator, but what she's known for is that defense, and it is on show tonight. She plays for the Chicago Sky and the WNBA, and uh, it's just infectious the way she plays defense and, and the way her team then rewards her for those efforts. For me, one of the, you know, the most fun players to watch here in the first half. Well, she is because she prides herself on defense, and then that defense, then translate into what she can do on offense as well. And so, you know, it's it's a it's a two-way street. And, and I love that, the fact that, that she really takes pride in both ends of the court, as do most of these players out there. And they're showing that. The USA, like I said at the beginning, have been very impressive. And across the way, Puerto Rico, you looking at the game leaders, but they're going to have to find a way to add to that assist column and certainly to the points column. Well. Dorantes is having a real a real go out there. Um, she's trying to, to make things happen for her team. Five rebounds is good, five points. It's just hard to keep her involved, and, and, and a lot of her shots have been taken right at the end of a shot clock where that's, you know, three, two, one, and she has to put something up. But um, look, she's been impressive, and we know what she's able to do. 
She certainly shone in the game yesterday, and um, I expect that that's will something they would have talked about at halftime is how can we how can we get somebody like Durantes open. And, and we got to touch on her performance in day one: 26 points, nine rebounds, eight assists, the best World Cup performance for Puerto Rico ever. So I mean, to come from that bit of a high to now switch gears, Team USA in front of me. Now she's got even a larger target? Oh my goodness. Well, that's the thing is that when you are the top scorer of a team that you played the night before, you're now going to be the main focus of the scout. How do we stop Garantes? How do we keep her from scoring 26 points? So the spotlight well and truly is on her this day defensively from the USA. We're trying to listen in here to the Team USA huddle a little bit. But you're right now. You go out and have a stellar game, Lori, and everybody knows who you are. There's no hiding. There's no hiding when you score 26 points in the first game of a Women's World Basketball Cup. And let's just talk about it. The 12 best teams in the world are here at the Olympic Park in Sydney, Australia. These fans are here to see a show, and these women sparkle on the floor. And at the end of 10 days, right, there's going to be a trophy awarded. We're going to know who the number one team is and who will be the next FIBA World Champion. Team USA, they're going for number four in a row. And wasn't it a wonderful trophy that they unveiled last night in the opening ceremonies? Brianna Stewart presented it to the crowd and to the fans and the players that were there, and it is magnificent. Third quarter has begun, everybody. Hong Shed with the first shot. And to me, USA is moving at a different speed here. Lloyd, her jumper short. So the challenge for the USA in a game like this is to stay at a high level, a high, high level of of what you're trying to accomplish out there mentally and physically. Stewart up on Garante. She'll pull up the three in Kalia Copper's face. <laughs> Late whistle there is Quinones. <laughs> Wit and met Thomas. They had a good look at each other, the, the referees and Quinones. Yeah, so what'd you have for breakfast today? Yeah. <laughs> Would you watch on Netflix? Any good shows? Enough time for a combo. Stewart. Copper baseline wow. finish on the left. It rolls in. What a beauty. She has such an explosive first step. Wow. Where can I find a Kalia Copper jersey? All right, Garantes on the other side. Thomas comes with the pressure. USA have the luxury of being able to. There you go. That's just always such a showstopper. Stops us in mid-sentence. When oh. that happens, when the ball is jammed up on the rim, it becomes a jump ball situation. So but the there was a whistle error, before, Lord. That's true. For a, for a foul, shooting the three. against Kalia Copper. They're going to say that was before she was shooting. Okay. Okay. Garante's off the screen. Quinones curls. Not enough space. Rosado on the wing. Let's go. No. Hard oh dear. hit. Belindez is down on the floor. Copper on the other end shoots the jumper from mid. It's a miss. Stewart in the paint. She'll finish. But we have a Puerto Rico player on the floor. It is Tyra Melendez. And she is in pain. Oh, she's in a lot of pain. And she did not, as soon as she hit the floor, she did not come up. Oh, dear me. That ankle does not look good. Thomas was riding alongside Melendez. She's got her left foot, you're right. Oh, thank goodness she's walking off the court. Yes. 
So that's what, exactly what we were talking about at halftime when you talk about a little bit of luck. Injuries play a big part of it. If you can make it through a tournament without any injuries, everybody's going to get niggles along the way. Everybody's going to be sore and have knocks and, and, and some, um, you know, sore spots. But if you can avoid any injuries that keep you out of games, that's where the luck comes in. And you only have 12 here. So once you name your roster, there is no going back. <laughs> Picking pockets. Thomas can't finish. She'll draw the foul. Hollingshed had to deliver it. Otherwise, that would have been another easy two for Alyssa Thomas, the Connecticut Sun power forward. Well, that certainly is where she picked her pocket. Before that vision there, where she picked it was going to, you thought it was going to be an automatic layup. <laughs> a little bit of a wry grin on her face. So Hollingshed takes a break after she picks up her fourth, wow, fourth personal foul for Hollingshed. Gerantes right at Copper. Quinona is open on the wing. Good look. So that was good ball movement. That was a nice penetration, kick out, another pass, and a wide open shot. Just didn't go down. Stewart, skip pass. Atkins, she gets it. And USA building on their lead. Puerto Rico, though, going to take a time out. Forty-one point advantage for Team USA, the number one team in the FIBA World Rankings. That was Coach Batista telling his team how he wants them to bring the ball up. Got some kangaroos in the stands. Lots of young students here enjoying basketball on a Friday morning. They got Team USA, Puerto Rico on the floor. I'm Despina Barton, joined by Lori Chiswick, the former Australian assistant coach and you are watching the FIBA Women's World Cup Group A play. Both teams walked in with victories and Garantes turnaround jumper for two. They did a good job of moving the ball. It shifted the defense a little bit just to give, just to give them that opportunity to have a little bit of space to have an open shot. Stewart has certainly great board advantage. by Garantes in amongst the tall timber of the USA. Four seconds on the shot clock. O'Neal has Stewart and won't get the shot up in time. She had the speed advantage. Well, there's one thing about shooting a three over UNESCO's hand, and there's another 
level of difficulty shooting it over a Brianna Stewart hand. I'd pull it down too, Lori. I'd pull it real down, real fast. <laughs> So Puerto Rico's in this zone, trying to just stem the flow of scoring from the USA. So they can be active. Wow. Skirt around pass around Quinones. Atkins to Austin, and she'll shoot two. Shakira Austin. The center, she plays for the Washington Mystics in the WNBA, a newcomer to this Team USA senior squad roster. 22 years old she is. Brings a lot of consistency and athleticism. And that's what Cheryl Reeve likes about her. Five points. Well, what a great opportunity for her to suit up you know, alongside the, the likes of a Brianna Stewart to, to learn, to be a sponge. Durante's calling for the screen. Pagan rolls. O'Neal cannot shake Jewel. And again, two shot clock violations and turnovers for Puerto Rico. The thing is with, with the USA, they have the luxury of, because they have the athletes that they have, any on-ball screens, a lot of times it's a switch and they can switch it so aggressively. UNESCO will check in and Atkins will take a breather. Interestingly enough, this Team USA team has been here quite a, you know, since training camp September 14th, but they haven't had a full roster the last few days having to cancel practice. So, I, Lori, I, to be able to be on the floor and get these minutes five on five and you're not going up against yourself, what does that do for a team like this that plans to be here on day number 10? Well, it doesn't matter what team you're playing as long as it's not yourselves. You do get tired of those scrimmages and, you know, it's, it's you know each other inside and out. And so to play another team where you can then have the element of unpredictability. It's so important, and it's just for the the, the mind, you know, the mindset of the players. So much more fun. <laughs> I think Cheryl Reeve was asked about uh, after the Belgium match yesterday. You know, how do you monitor minutes, and are you concerned with only, you know, not being at full speed here as far as the roster goes? She says monitoring minutes is not a big deal. When you have nine, it's a little bit easier to play yes. for the rotation. But she did say that, uh, you know, every day, all day, these players prefer to play in game situations versus practice. So they're happy to be here. They're happy to run the floor. And certainly show off their skill set. O'Neal, Pagan, loose ball. Taken away, UNESCO spins and tricks out our defender. Copper. Little mixed speed wow. use finish in the lane. She is a delight to watch today. She is just doing it at both ends, but just her athleticism and her quickness. That first step is so explosive. Jones, Shook Roy got her own rebound. Corner shot from the youngster. It is a miss. And Austin looks down court. And the passing lane was Quinones. And we're six minutes through the third quarter. USA heavily out in front, 71-23. Copper getting subbed out there. She's done a lot of work today. And USA not. Backing down on defense. Laney picking up the youngster. San Antonio, she'll take him right at you. That would have been a big confidence booster, right? Oh, it would have just been an easy basket. Nescu 
being guarded tightly here. Jones, seven on the shot clock. Don't worry, I got it. I know what to do with the rock. Brianna Jones. You know, I like the fact that, that Coach Cheryl Reeve is on the sideline. She's coaching these girls. She's not just sitting there going, you know, this game's done. It's that she is coaching out there. She's, she's wanting them to do some different things. And while some people might look at that and go, why are the U.S. pressing up full court? Why? You know what? That shows, shows a sign of respect for your opponents. Um, it means that you're, you respect them enough that you want to still play your style of game, regardless of what the, score clock, the scoreboard says. The fact that she is up coaching right now it is, a, to me, a really good sign. And it, it shows what it means to the whole organization. Little high-low, Jones to Austin. Turn and jumper over two Puerto Rico defenders. Shakira Austin, that young center. San Antonio. Roma picks up her dribble, needs help. Six on the shot clock, you gotta get something happening here. Jones tries to, she gets it up in time. Off back rim, UNESCO surveying the floor. Into Austin. Brianna Jones, though, knew exactly where it was going. I like what I'm seeing from Brianna Jones out there. She's a, she's a nice, strong body, physical out there. She's not taking a backward step. This Puerto Rico team communicating on defense, making sure everyone's marked up where they're supposed to be. Those substitutions. UNESCO. San Antonio gets tripped up. She'll switch. Jones off the elbow. And then the, the motion here is to feed Austin. I can tell the last three yes. or four minutes. Well, again, that's a that's a good strategy, and that's probably something they, they've said, let's do this, you know, give her the opportunity to work on her post seals, work on her finishes. Laney on the wing, pull-up jumper baseline, won't go UNESCO there for the rebound. Post play in the highlight, Brianna Jones. Certainly USA with the concerted effort there. Handoff. All right, but it'll stay with Puerto Rico. Minute and a half left in this quarter. Shot from Brianna Jones. And we'll roll with Laney. Coast to coast nearly. She'll get a shot at adding two more to the scoreboard. Yeah, you gotta think, I mean, Team USA, they will play next. Let's see, they got Puerto Rico today, then they face China tomorrow. So a lot more height, right, with China. That'll be an interesting game because China looked very impressive yesterday. And yes, they do. It's the height will match. You're right. China was smothering Korea. It was very hard. I mean, suffocating them nearly in that opening match. And Puerto Rico will take on Belgium tomorrow. So now, so you saw, you can see here with the USA that they've got their four bench players on, and then Jewel Lloyd and Atkins have been subbing for each other as, because they only have nine players, as we've mentioned. So you keep the point guard steady. The other four can kind of alternate in and out. Yeah, well, you just want to give them, you, you know, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for the, the four players um, out there to, to get some chemistry and then you don't just want to you know burn Jewel Lloyd or burn uh, Atkins so you know it's a good rotation for them as well. First free throw goes down for San Antonio. Again 18 years old guys. She came in and she plays for the California Baptist University. 
Had to do some hefty traveling to make it here to Sydney. UNESCO picked up full court. Gonzalez has her number. Unescu, by the way, still without her first field goal here in FIBA World Cup competition. And she's, of course, making her Team USA senior debut. She grew up with FIBA, but due to different injuries and timing of sorts, this All is right, her she's, debut. She's going to make one here at least. I can tell. I can feel it. Oh. Commentator's curse. It's the worst. I have faith, Lori. I have faith. Yes! She gets her first point of the contest. It came via free throw here in the third quarter. I mean, what does that do for a player, too, Lori? I mean, that it's a mental thing. You think or no? Well, what do coaches? I, absolutely. If you're the only one that hasn't scored and then you've missed some, because a couple of the shots he's missed were, were very gettable, very makeable, and so she'd be disappointed in that. So, you know, even just making that first foul shot might just release a little bit of tension, a little bit of freedom out there, and uh, because she's a good shooter, we know that. We know that, yes. San Antonio, pull up, fadeaway jumper, it's off, Austin grabs the rebound, we're under a minute. Unescu works off the screen. High, low. Jones turns, shoots. She wanted to finish there. Yeah, when you look at these groupings for uh, Group A, Team USA has Korea, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Puerto Rico, China, and Belgium. On the other side, France, Serbia, Japan, Mali, Canada, and Australia. That is why Group B is called the Group of Death. Right, so we have 12 teams, six in each grouping. Four of each group will move forward. And yes, that's very hard for Group B. Which are the four that move ahead? Well, I have a feeling in that group there might be some. With Group A, you would have to, you know, you'd probably assume USA is going to finish on top of it. But with Group B, it's, it's, you know, there's, I think there's going to be multiple teams having wins and losses. And it could come down to percentages. That's how close I think that Group B could be. Final 10 of the quarter. UNESCO calls the offense. San Antonio being real pesky. Wow, that was through the legs of San Antonio. This place would have gone up in an uproar if Jones would have hit that. <laughs> Listen, have a little fun. Team USA, they're up by a lot. A lot, 80 yes. to 27. Let me do the quick math. Up by 53. With still 10 more minutes to play. And for this USA squad, they know they have the target on their back, right? They're the defending champs, three in a row, going for number four. They have the most FIBA World Cup championships ever, 10 titles. And we're gonna show you why with some of these best plays in the third quarter. Yes, there's a lot of the USA in the highlights reel, starting off with Hopper and her explosiveness, just that step, and then Jewel Lloyd lighting it up from that three-point line. Coach Reeves likes that. Great little turnaround jump shot from Garantes, but again, Copper, we see her now doing her stuff from the three-point line after she's driven it in. She's just given us so much. Again, she did the first half and that quarter. Athletic, she's just like a highlight reel herself right now. Just eyes on the target. 14 points for Copper. She leads the way for Team USA. In fact, all scores on the floor today. 
and a lot more touches for Brianna Jones in those posts. Maybe you're right, Lori. This is in preparation now for China. We're looking ahead if you're Team USA. Well, it'll be a completely different style of game. You know, they, they, they won't be able to score as easily as they are against Puerto Rico with, the, with their size and that. So they are going to have to have a different focus, but they're going to have to keep running. You know, any time, that's, that's USA. They want to run, they want to get scores up and keep playing that tough defense. So you see the same group for the USA that uh, ended that quarter is starting again this last quarter of this game. Force turnover here, USA. And it'll be interesting to see whether tomorrow we see the likes of Kelsey Plum and Chelsea Gray suiting up for the U.S. That's just a whole nother level. And they're here, they're in this building. They are not suited up. They flew in this morning. And if I'm thinking they came from the east coast of the United States, that was a 20 plus hour journey to get here. Then you talk about the time difference, Lori. 14 hours ahead here in Sydney, Australia. And I know everyone's a pro, but there does take a little bit of adjustment. But not to mention the fact that they've come off a, a long WNBA season with the I mean, the they're championship. WNBA champions. Exactly. Goodness gracious. <laughs> so that's, um, you know, take that into consideration as well. Yep, and uh, there are a couple players too, and speaking of, checking in here, Melissa Thomas off the Connecticut Sun, who were also in the WNBA championships just on the runner-up positioning. And interesting enough, these players don't have a lot of time to decompress from one season now to their Team USA duties. And one can imagine uh, there's a lot of unpacking to do. Oh. I keep thinking if I, you know, I was thinking about how they would be feeling. It's like, okay, we can we can sleep in October. <laughs> you know, we can we can get some rest then, rest our bodies. San Antonio has come on and been a real spark for the Puerto Rican team right now. I think she just forgot she's not, you know, she's 18. I think once you kind of strip away those those little factors, you're right. We're seeing a little bit more out of her. Fiery. Coach Batista is shaking his head. And Austin. Four for five from the free throw line here today. There she goes. Open look, Roma on the free throw line. Thomas, the plan toward the corner. Austin spits it over. Laney takes the shot. <laughs> Beautiful stroke by Benajah Laney. Again, really good ball and player movement by the USA, resulting in that wide open look for Laney. We talked a little bit about USA and how they move forward and prepare for China, but for Puerto Rico, what can they take away from a contest like this? What do you think Coach Batista is seeking here in these final minutes? Well, interesting, I think he is resting his starters, so he may be thinking ahead to, you know, this game is, is not winnable, obviously, um, you know, give them a bit of a rest and, and see if they can come out a little bit stronger um, in the next game. Pagan, turn, shoot, kiss off the glass. It's a Friday. Are the bank's opening here, Lori? Well, this, you know, this, this bench group from Puerto Rico, 
I, I like what they're doing. They've got some energy out there. They're, they're not taking a backward step. Unescu deep from three. Off front rim. Cracks it herself. Austin decides to keep it, and she had the right call. That was a tough finish by Austin. She has found herself further under the basket than I think she anticipated. Puerto Rico have only been to the to the foul line six times, but I like how this group right now, and we just saw that in Gonzalez, is, is attacking them, trying to draw some fouls, try something different. I know for Team USA heading into this game, they really wanted to limit their turnovers. As we look at some of the... Well, they've certainly taken care of the ball right to date right now, it's seven turnovers compared to 19 yesterday against Belgium. Laney, baseline tray. Oh no. The fight from Roma will keep the possession with Team USA. As a coach though, at least you see your players going after the rebound, having a, ha, you know, trying to, to, to do something against this Athletic USA team. Too much on that pass from Laney intended for Brianna Jones. You know, as USA here takes a breather, some of the stars, Atkins there next to Copper. Puerto Rico, they have been building a, steadily, a steady climb to some international, I won't say prominence, but to get in the same arenas, right? Coach Batista says it's so important to play high-level competition so they can get better. Wow. Man, that would have been a nice finish it by Zaida Gonzalez. Been. That was athletic. And, and as I say, they are looking at really penetrating and, and trying to get themselves at the foul line. Yes, screw there. Spin move. Austin fadeaway misses. Kick out from Thomas. There's a famous clip from Oprah when she would give out gifts on our show. You get a three. Now you get a three. But it does seem like everyone's been eating today for Team USA. Coach Reeve wants to call a timeout here, and, and I think it's a good one because it's looking a little sloppy for the USA. We just expect such a high standard. And so whether you're a bench player coming in or you're one of the starters, you have to maintain that Saturn, so that, that you know, stature. So she would be a little bit disappointed right now um, with what she's seeing out there. So just a timeout to, to talk about that, um, regroup, give them some really specific directions perhaps this last six minutes of the last quarter. You, you look at those disparity in the numbers here. Puerto Rico 19 turnovers to USA's eight. And look at the conversion rate for Team USA. And that's what we were talking about sometimes where the turnover happens, how it happens, just results in a very easy layup, very easy bucket for the USA. I love this. Everyone doing the Macarena here, the six minute mark. The USA trying to figure out how they can leave their mark here in the final six with this group. Jones, pull up jumper top of the key. Good look. It was, it was a great shot. Yeah. 
Austin going to work. Name of the game here in the fourth. Clean up Jones. Twin Towers. Oh, the luxury of every team to have Twin Towers and then more Twin Towers sitting on the bench. I do love getting to see a, more of San Antonio here. Yeah, I'm impressed with her. She will be the future for Puerto Rico as Inescu gets her first field goal of the tournament. Good running of the floor at this stage of the, the fourth quarter. That's what you want to see, and I'm sure that's what the coach talked about at that timeout. We've got to keep that level up. We still want to run. Kalia Copper checks back in. Team USA's leading scorer today. Everyone for Team USA is in the scorebook. And a backcourt call will hand the ball over to the Americans. Six players in double figures, which you would expect when it's a 92-point score line. I believe this would be probably the largest margin of victory in the tournament so far. So that is just great post-to-post -post action in a zone. Go into one post in the low post. The high post just dives in, and they like on a string. Such good symmetry. Yes! Anna. Yes! This time, Jones will hit it from the wing. Copper baseline feed, Austin streaking. Contact made. And that's what you want to get to when you're at, uh, at that level as a team. So that baseline penetration by Copper, and then you see her teammate in Austin just moving to the right spot, the right receiver spot, and they know exactly where each other should be. And then if she was there, she finds herself at the foul line. Eighteen points for Shakira Austin, her debut here with Team USA. And now the chants are going. The Washington Mystic Center with 19 on the day. <laughs> she wanted that basket. She's got some serious speed. Calling should back on the floor. Oh, nearly a, a backcourt violation. Jones with the screen of Quinones. Gonzalez creating her own space. Man, if some of these just would drop for Puerto Rico. There's a cap on the, on the hoop today as we're keeping things running with San Antonio. Calling shed. A no-go, and we'll slow things down. Maybe that's a positive that uh, the coach will take from this game, is, or at least this last quarter, is that they've gotten some good looks at the basket. Now they have to finish those. So you talk about San Antonio, that fast break. So she is going fast. You have to be able to finish now when you play at that high pace. And that's what a team like USA does. It, it speeds you up, so you have to be able to to cope and, and make decisions, finishes, when you're playing at high pace. But here we see her shooting a three. Just shoot another one. Why not? Feed to Quinones on the baseline. Gets her own rebound. She's a veteran. She knows how to get position and create. Elise Quinones now to That was her first shoot. two points of the game. Quiet production-wise. Well, for she, had, she had 15 points yesterday. Jones, high-low direct connect to Austin. under three to play in this contest. 
Calling shed feet on the baseline, pushed out of bounds. Copper gonna get ding with the foul. Her second. Mar Vargas, a six foot, 22 year old. Yes, I was surprised she was at the line. I, it wasn't a foul situation, a shooting situation, but I think they've changed their mind and it's on the end line. I was gonna say she was driving on the baseline. Yeah, line. yeah, and they're not in foul trouble yet. That was the fourth foul for the USA team, so they still have one to go before they send them to the bonus situation. Coach Batista there with his final message for his team. Also on the screen there during that timeout, the shooting percentage of the USA is right up there. Right now shooting 55% overall from the real goal, 76 from the three point from the free throws, and 44 from the three-point line. Having trouble getting open here. And that's right, five seconds. Violation. Turnover number 21 for Puerto Rico. USA in full control from start to finish in this one. Laney. Jones, Austin, high, low. Double, turn still gets it up. Hauling shed on the weak side. And here goes San Antonio again. Hauling shed squares up. The spot up three, no good, but the smallest oh, player right. on the court, San <laughs> Antonio picks up the board. She is going to be a real talent for Puerto Rico in the future. 18 years old, as we mentioned. Minescu the feed to Copper. It's been all post play here in the third. Unescu three. No, put back. No! Again, keep it going. Third attempt in USA falls up short. Ooh, oh. the block from behind! She did Shakira not. Austin. And then running the floor and ending with a nice fast break layup. Benajah Laney. The beloved Laney here in front of a quasi home team. Well, home, home. She's been, what, one season here, Lori? One season, yes. One, one season. season. Not in Sydney, though, in Melbourne. In Melbourne. <laughs> Very close. Cool. Actually, you tell me, how far yeah, is gonna, Melbourne? I was going to say, how, how do you know how close it is? It's about an hour, just over an hour flight from Sydney. So if you're driving? 11 hours. So not really close. Not at all. OK. The youngster hits the first. Unconventionally. Five points, six rebounds for San Antonio.
Jones on the receiving end. Not a give and go action for Team USA. Jones is doing a really good job of exploiting that middle of the zone. It's wide open. And then San Antonio <laughs> right on time. Just will keep running at you. Copper left lane takes it, lays it in the right. Under a minute. The double. Now she should go to the foul line. USA is over that limit of five fouls. really get any easier for Puerto Rico tomorrow they have Belgium who you know we were we're actually even though they lost to the USA I thought they were pretty impressive I mean they were going toe-to-toe -to -toe at one point I know the final score it was USA by 15 but there were there were glimpses where Belgium was hanging with this team USA squad High low again. Jones gets lots of white jerseys around her. And the foul. Well, the USA certainly have had the opportunity to, to work on their low, their zone offenses, the structures, the actions that they want to run against the zone. And as you mentioned, Espina, it's all been about inside, inside. And we just have to remember that if there is a zone and it collapses, they've got all those brilliant outside shooters ready to catch and shoot. Too many weapons as UNESCO strips San Antonio. A foul made as Roma tried to get it back. And the bonus now for both teams, so free throw. <laughs> More shots to go up. Well, UNESCO can add to her tally. She does. Five points for UNESCO. Three rebounds. Final ticks. San Antonio going at UNESCO. Drives, floaters up, rolls out. Laney with the board. And folks, that's how this one's going to end. Team USA does not let Puerto Rico near them. The final score, USA 106, Puerto Rico 42. Really right from that tip off, the USA, there was no doubt in their mind and what they brought to the court, how they were feeling. They were just going to go out there, respect their opponent, play hard. Uh, and come out with that W and work on some things, keep gathering that, chem that team chemistry. Uh, as we've mentioned over and over, there's more players to come in, so that'll be a good win for them. Uh, lots of players got lots of minutes, um, very even scoring, lots of double figures, so, so they'll feel good. And USA here stepping out with nine once again, day two. They didn't need any more, but they should be at full strength coming up over the next couple of days. This one. They send Puerto Rico home by a 64-point advantage. Coach Shell Reeve kind of waving and saying hello to some fans as USA will head into the locker room and start their preparation for China tomorrow. Kelsey Plum there, and of course next to her, her teammate Chelsea Gray off those Las Vegas Aces WNBA championship team. More to come as this Team USA team gets to full strength. Meanwhile, lots of young inspiration for Puerto Rico. A look at some of those top scorers of the contest.
Well, you look at, uh, we've been talking about her who played the whole last quarter, some of that third quarter. San Antonio ended up being their se second top scorer. Um, so, you know, she was, she was refreshing to see out there for Puerto Rico. A look and now at those best plays, Lori. Well, I mean, the USA is just a highlight reel, isn't it, with everything that they can do. But we did see a couple of nice plays and, and, and a shot like that from um, uh, uh, Garantes um, showed that Puerto Rico were still trying to do what they do out there. But the USA were just dominant. And Kalia Copper stole the show on defense and on offense. So much fun to watch. And then the post came alive late in this game. USA showing us all their tools. Well, they did. And, you know, we know it was almost like the first half, the focus was on outside shooting. And then in that second half, when they had those twin towers in there, we can see big to big, high to low, going at it hard against that zone, exploiting the middle of it. And uh, they did a really good job. And it seemed like that was more of their focus in the second half. A lot to clap about for Cheryl Reed. Team USA will move forward 2-0 and oh as they continue this group play of the tournament. And oh yeah, they punch out their win streak to 31 in the preliminary round. That is so impressive. And, and on the back of the way, they, they've just got so many weapons. They can score at the rim. They can score by running fast breaks. We know what a potent perimeter team they are. Uh, they just, um, yeah, they're very impressive. And we knew that from them. And we talk about that. They still don't have three of their best players on the court. Coach Reeves said earlier in the week, they're going to do with what they have. And they don't need anybody else at this point. Take a look. At game two, excuse me, game day two scores. This one on this court, USA 106-42. Next up, it's Belgium and Korea. And then we will see China and Bosnia. Herzegovina. So from the Sydney Olympic Park, the sports center here, it is USA that gets their second win of the tournament. The only team to be undefeated so far through Group A. Much more basketball ahead. Go ahead and stay with us. I'm going to say goodbye, though, from the Sydney Olympic Park Sports Center. For my partner, Lori Chizik, I'm Despina Barton. It's Team USA that runs away with this victory. The final score handedly, Team USA.